In this video, we'll be handling extremely caustic and acidic solutions. Make sure you always wear proper gear if you're handling stuff like this, like nitric acid, silver nitrate, or any other chemicals that can harm you or kill you. It's silver cell harvest time, folks. Let's see what we got. We've got a slightly unorthodox setup here. I'm using what I have for limited glassware. I'm gonna transfer this silver nitrate into here. I'm gonna pour my electrolytic solution, electrolyte solution in this bowl. And I'm going to be reusing it this time. I'm limited with glassware, so I'm using what I've got. Cell has been eating for nine days now. I'm harvesting a full day early. Some of the slimes and waste from my last silver cell, and I'm going to be doing some refining on that. And my 5,000 milliliter beaker uh, broke, so that's why I am limited on glassware. Let's go ahead and pull this electrolyte basket out. Anode basket, excuse me, of the electrolyte. And see what we've got in here. Holy moly. That looks perfect. Let's get it out. There's a look at the pure silver crystal. And it looks just beautiful. I'm a fan. Look at that shard down in there. Dang. All right. I'm going to pour this solution off. Transfer some stuff here into there. And we'll have to do some rinses to get this looking clean. Get the electrolyte solution off the silver and get it dry. And get a weight on it. Go ahead and guess now in the comments as to what you think our final yield will be. The very first thing we're gonna do now that we got this electrolyte solution poured off out of here, because this is what we'll rinse our silver in, is to pour off this electrolyte solution. So we have less wasted electrolyte that we'll recover the silver out of. So I'm gonna pour that into this bowl. Okay, there's our first look at the crystalline silver. Dang, there are some pieces in there, let me tell you. We'll set this aside and we'll reuse this to run the rest of the silver that I have hanging out. In this bucket, I've got some copper pipe and we will do our several rinses and pour them into this bucket. So that's what you'll see. Once we get the silver in here, and it'll drop out any silver left in the silver nitrate for us to recover when we cement it out. Crack this distilled water open. Get me here a spoon, and we'll just scrape the edges of this bowl off. And yes, this does break some of the crystals up, but you can't really, can't really avoid that. So look at these shards, man. This is, oh, this is quite epic. I've done several, 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 several silver cells, but that thing, man. All right, we'll get the silver into here and then start rinsing. So we've got our silver transferred into this beaker and I'm gonna do a couple preliminary rinses. Then I'll actually go inside and get some of this distilled water boiling and do some distilled water boils as well. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna get this plated out here in this bucket. I'll show you that. Last time I was pretty confident I uh, actually used all the silver in the solution. And this time we should have a good amount hanging out in this silver nitrate. And that'll plate out all the copper. 
known as cement silver. Now, I don't think you guys can see it on the camera, but I can actually see the nitric acid, excuse me, the silver nitrate in the water as it pours out. Jeez Louise, my boys are freaking out inside. Been one of those days from what I understand. You got three boys at home or three kids really, or kids in general, you just kind of know what I mean. If you know, you know. Yeah, and you can see silver already plating out on the very bottom of those pipes. And that is quite all right. We will get it all. All right, I'm gonna continue this process and I'll catch up with you guys at the next step. Done a few pour offs of this water. <clears throat> I'm gonna get into the house and do some boiling. And here's kind of what I wanted to show you uh, because this looks crystal clear, looks good. It looks like there's nothing in here. But there's really one only there's really only one way to test that out and that is to see if any silver chloride forms in this pour off solution and i will show you what that looks like especially right at the very end right here is where that stuff's liking to hang out right at the bottom of all this silver and you gotta think it's like a spider web of silver hanging out and it's gonna trap things that you're not really expecting to see in there. So that's why we do a bunch of pour offs and use hot water to really get that stuff moving around. And it takes gallons of distilled water to uh, clean this silver off, gallons. So I will go grab something with uh, some chlorine in it and show you. Here I've got some hydrochloric acid, also known as muriatic acid. Now, if for some reason this doesn't show that there's any chlorides in here, which I'm pretty confident it will show some, I have the lid for the silver cell right here, which has some silver nitrate that just fell on the table right here, right there. And I'll put that in there and show you what happens when that goes and gets dissolved. But I'm pretty sure we'll see a white cloud. And that is silver chloride for me. So as you can see, there is a white cloud that formed. And when we put that chunk in there, it got coated in silver chlorides. Now it's not very much, but it's enough to mess the batch up. So that white opaqueness is silver chloride in solution and we don't want that so we will continue to do these boils and pour offs until we do not see this reaction occur in our samples and it's going to take a little while so i'm going to boil some distilled water do some pour offs and rinse and repeat we're going to do some rapid pour offs here water is boiling oh okay i didn't spill any super close spill there but you know what? Even if we spilled some silver crystal in the bucket right there with the cement silver, we get back. Don't be scared. It's just silver, you know. Boiling water. Last last time I was doing this, I burnt my hands so bad. Cause doing this part right here on the sides, this flask, this beaker gets so hot. 
like boiling hot, literally. You can get some more distilled water in there, get it boiling again. That's uh, two and a quarter gallons so far. Off to the boil factory. You know, Cletus has the Freedom Factory. <laughs> we got the Silver Factory out here. Man, the silver looks great. Big shout out to the Dingy Bandits. They sponsored this video. Crack one for the homies. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like, and share the love. Cheers. Now on our last silver cell refining video, I had a buddy of mine who lives in Arizona uh, and who is a subscriber to the channel. He asked me, what did you do different, Mike? Why are the crystals so long? Why are they so pretty? What is going on? What did you do different? Well, uh, and oh, he also mentioned, hey, uh, do you think the temperature has anything to do with it? 48 state prospecting, yes. Yes, I did things different. And yes, the temperature has a direct correlation to how the silver cell operates. Now, with hotter temperatures and less temperature fluctuation during the day in Arizona, you know, we'll go from right now we're at like 80 to the top of 100 right now. Uh, we're in the month of May and it's not quite summer yet, but it's hot. Uh, as you can tell, I got sweat dripping off my forehead here. But... In the winter time, I do not run my silver cell since I do it outside. If I were to do it outside with the fluctuations of temperatures from, let's say, you know, low to mid 30s all the way up to 70s, we got a, like a 40 degree delta. In the summertime, we might have a 20 degree difference. So it's a lot more stable with the temperature fluctuations. And when you think about it, uh, when it comes to the chemistry of everything, things move faster at hotter temperatures. So, and things move slower at slower temperatures. It's kind of how it works. So, you know, in the mornings I'd go out to the cell and we're at 0 0.8, 0 0.9 amps uh, with the constant voltage of 3.5. Well, when we hit the peak heat of the afternoon, we're looking at a constant, uh, constant voltage of 3.5, but the amps are all the way up back to 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 um, so we see a 0.3 delta in the amperage and the amperage makes the silver plate out faster and it, and it, so it plates out on the bowl faster in the winter time. I don't run the cell. It's a lot slower and there is a chance, uh, that it just won't run right. In my experience it, being outdoors and running it, that's what I've seen. That's what I've experienced. I've also seen a lot fluffier silver in the winter time. Um, it gets really spindly. It, sometimes it runs, it hits really fast, even though it's a slower amperage. It's weird. Um, and you can go back and look at all my videos. They're generally in the summertime when I'm running that silver cell. So I've been waiting a while uh, to process the silver that I've had, along with the stuff that Chef V sent me. Uh, you know, I was telling him, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So, uh, We've run a bunch of silver that I had from last year. I've run a bunch of silver that Chef V sent me. And we're finally back up to where I almost don't have very much material left. So this last, this third batch that I'm about to run is just kind of the tail end of what I've got from gold refining uh, and stuff that I had left over from last year. So there you Close go. To my setup, I used to have alligator clips on the bowl. This year I went with a big uh, worm drive clamp couple plates of copper, which I don't think are super necessary, but I've got them on there. Thanks, Kevin. You already know if you know. And I have the copper connection right here in this plate that runs along the side of the bowl. That's how I've got it set up. That's my biggest difference. And I believe the alligator clips, when they were clipped onto the bowl here, they would rust out from the fumes and, and the exposure to the nitric. And in my opinion, I don't think they had as good of a connection as this. So Kevin, again, 
Thank you for all you do. If you guys don't know who Kevin is, go check out Street Tip. I feel like a dingus pouring off all this hot water without my gloves that I use for uh, running the forge. So this should be a lot more comfortable. As we wait uh, for this water to come to a boil, I wanted to talk to you about why this silver chloride is purple. And that is because it's exposed to sunlight. Sunlight, and I, I'm assuming the UV rays have something to do with it. Uh, turn the silver chloride purple, and I've never really put a chunk of silver nitrate in water with chloride in it, but it formed a really interesting, looks like a, uh, like a stingray, Batman type formation, but kind of pulverizing it in here. And this white chunky stuff, again, is silver chloride. Most of it's just suspended in a solution. You can't see much of it, but that's why it's purple. It is still recoverable using sodium hydroxide and table sugar uh, to reduce it and get it back into metallic state. But that's, that's kind of what we see here. That looks like a little V right there. VM. Vendetta Mike. All right, so I'm gonna clean this thing out and we're gonna test our solution after we run these next couple boils of hot distilled water and see if we have any more chlorides present. Also got the silver cell bowl here wired up and ready to go back into action. I'm gonna put this old used silver nitrate back in here and I'm gonna finish running the rest of the silver that I've got, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Okay, I've got that silver nitrate transferred over to the bowl. The water level's a little bit low, which is just fine, because I have this, which is some silver crystal and a couple coins, silver coins, bullion, and I will top this off to add a little bit higher concentration of silver nitrate. Back to the solution make it more alive and I also add a little bit of water and we'll be back in business all right we got some hot water pour it on pour it on get my handy dandy gloves on the silver cell is back in action We've got 3.5 watt, uh, watts, 3.5 volts, excuse me, and about 0.8 amps. And that is because there's not a lot of silver plated out on there. So it has dropped for sure. And I still see quite a bit of silver nitrate pouring off these crystals based on my visual feedback from this water coming out of the beaker. I can't show you what that looks like because my hands are full. You know what, let me try. Let me try. I'll try to show you what that looks like. Okay, bear with me. I'm gonna have to burn my hands to show you guys this stuff. So, if you think burning your hands is worth a subscribe or a like, please drop it, please drop it. I'm gonna 
pour this the majority of this off and I'll show you they're not convection because it's not heat but it is the best way I could describe it is is like some flow flow lines or Best way I can describe it without you guys being able to see that. I know I just tried to show you guys. It probably wasn't very good. Of course, my hands are burning. So it's like oil and water. They have different densities. They don't mix. They're not immersible unless you constantly are stirring them and, and, and blending. That's what that looks like to me when I'm saying, hey, I can see that there's still silver nitrate in the water that I'm pouring off. It's really hard to show you on a, on a iPhone or a camera, but that's what I'm seeing. Let's check this solution and see if adding hydrochloric acid shows any silver chloride. I just looked at the silver cell when I went to get this muriatic acid, hydrochloric acid, and it's already up to 9.7. So things are settling out, figuring the, each other out, and I already see silver plating out. We're talking under an hour and a half to get the silver out and back to work. Here goes the addition of the, the hydrochloric acid to see if we have any silver chloride in solution still. You see that? That's exactly what I was talking about, the oil and water. And I don't see any silver chloride forming. The sediment that you see in there is because this is very old and if you look at any of my refining videos for the past six months, there's been stuff like that that I've been dealing with. So, this is almost empty, I'll get a new one. There's no silver chloride clouds forming. We are good with this silver. Let's get it dry. It's a second chance before I weigh it up and dry it up to guess in the comments what you think this yield is. My guess is 1,222 grams. What you guys got? Silver, you guys saw me pour in this 300 milliliter beaker. Actually, it's technically a 400 milliliter beaker. Come on, bro. We got that German glass boiling away with that silver in there. I added 25 milliliters of nitric acid to dissolve. I estimated about 40 grams, or excuse me, yeah, 40 grams of silver. Could be more, could be less. I don't know. It's a scientific guess. But that is uh, to form more silver nitrate, which I will add to the silver cell throughout this week. Let's go check out the silver cell. And no, I'm not wearing a respirator. So like I mentioned, the amperages were climbing as I was checking out the silver cell. It started at about 7, 8, and then it went up to 1.12 with the constant voltage of 3.5. And uh, yeah, the silver cell's back up and running. I don't have very much silver left. What I need to do in the next, over the weekend is refine these slimes, drop out all the silver, cause there is some, there is some decent weight right here specifically. Along with that, but let's look inside the silver cell and see what we got going. You see those little dots right there? That is crystalline silver forming on the edges, ladies and gentlemen. And we are about hour and a half, two hours in to this refine. Street tips, you're the man. Thank you for teaching me everything you have along the way for refining. I have yourself 
and my chemistry teacher while I was in college about 10 years ago to thank for all of this. You're the only two people that I learned from. Okay, that's the pirate's booty chest and it's empty, but I'm gonna change that. This is my gold cellar and refining area where I do all my magic, store all my stuff. That's pure gold, ladies and gentlemen. That's gold and copper. Copper's the red stuff. Blech. Copper sucks, but it's great for incortation. There's some gold I need to get out of there right there. I can see it. It's right there. This is from Flower Gold Wizards. He sent me five ounces of gold to refine, and that black stuff's the nastiness that I did from a test sample. But there's some gold right there, ladies and gentlemen. And this is where I'll run my silver cell. There it is. Prospector L requested some silver in a jar before he goes to bed. And I am not someone to deny my child of something that they want. Daddy said I have a shop piece. There you go. You can put some water in that and you can have it. 